I want to express my sincere condolences on behalf of Parliament and on my own behalf for the death of Sergeant Rebecca Cheptegei, who died in a national attack in Kenya. Our former uh, athletics Olympian. It's unfortunate that we keep losing people in such a manner, especially through gender, uh, through domestic violence. Really, it is something we have to sit down and we see how best we can handle. It's, uh, it's very, very unfortunate. There are many who are dying that way, who are not known. Uh, uh, our sister Rebecca at least had a name that could sound uh, beyond her own area. So, but uh, for those who are dying quietly, it's an issue which we have to tackle as leaders, as a community, not only political leaders, but leaders from all aspects of society. It's an issue that we must indeed uh, see a war of tackling, we must put our, our heads together and, and, and get a solution on how best it can be mitigated. We must denounce bad cultural practices which still exist. Why am I bringing this? In some of the communities in our country and in the neighboring country, they still believe that property, money, it should all be held by men. Mr. Speaker, I know of one case which I don't want to put on record where one of my daughters, who is one of our national athletes, came to me and cried to me and requested me to talk to the husband. I want to confirm. I call the husband. I call the father of the husband. I call the mother of the what? Of the husband. I sat with them in my office here. I cancelled them. And today, that friend of ours, that friend of mine, my daughter is finally peaceful and doing a commendable job. So the question is, like what you say, it's true, these things exist, and I really want to challenge us colleagues. It's important that we really get back to our society and explain certain roles. If not, you're right on what you've said. The last one which I'd forgotten, imagine this barbaric man. The poor girl attempted to run in the house to pick water, having burnt the mother, ran to get water to pour to the mother, the poor man kicked the poor girl. What kind of a human being are you? Uh, thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to join this parliament to second the motion of paying tribute to our international foreign athlete, our sister, Rebecca Chaptegei. It's so sad that Uganda went viral on international media over such a bad image. But uh, I want to tackle it in a different way. First of all, how did our sister go to Kenya? She went to Kenya because she was looking for a better facility, training facility, to reach her dreams. That's how she got a, 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 a man, a monster, that took her life. Uh, actually, I would call him a beast. Our honorable minister and uh, the government. To end these injustices and to end this character where our athletes are losing properties, are losing lives in Kenya, we should focus more on improving our training facilities here. We have the Terriet High Altitude Center, which has been built for, for years and years, I think 13 years, and it's not yet finished as for now. Yet, if it was in a good way, our people wouldn't go to Kenya to look for better facilities. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Minister Gwang did a good job in counseling the girl athletes. But we need fair budgeting for these other sports federations. We agree that football is the most popular sport in the country. But if other federations also got good, better budgets, maybe they would have a person, a better person, a professional person who would speak to the athletes before 
doing this post-mortem. So I call upon the minister and the government to see that we improve these other sports disciplines, the budget. Imagine one getting 17 and netball getting 320 million shillings. Other getting 17 billion and another getting 320. So we think we need to, to get a way of how we can balance and do fairness of, of, of all the sports. When we speak about uh, sports, most countries have what we call high performance centers. These look like academies, national academies, where actually they are, they are always in different regions. When they tap into a talent, they bring them together. They say together because sports is based on four aspects. The technical one, the tactical one, the physical, and the most important thing is the psychological approach. Honorable Minister and the government, where are these things in our country? Where is the national center that helps to improve these authorities when they are still at the young age? So I think we should focus more of making a national academy, a national high performance center, not only national, but even regional. Where if we get talents at, a, at an early age, we get them, we nurture them, and all excel in the four aspects. Uh, the government of France, right on our speaker, named a, a place, a sports facility in Paris after our fallen hero. What is the government of Uganda doing? France, which is far away miles from here, there is a sports center that was named after this heroine, Honorable Minister. We need also to know, because we need to remember her always and always. The way she died needs to act as a sign for men, for, 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 all, for all people, not to involve in domestic violence. I pray, as we are praying to see that we get more sports facilities. I'm happy that this time at least we got some, but it would have done, been done years ago, and it's not enough. Because it's basically basing on the AFCON, which is football. Right, Honorable uh, Minister. Since we have many disciplines, those stadiums that are built should tackle other disciplines. We should have a gym for boxing. We should have uh, netball uh, and, 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 and the rest. Lastly, as I'm concluding this, right, Honorable Speaker, the main issue for Uganda, especially for sports, is not prioritizing. Though I thank this parliament for the first time, it's the, the first parliament to give sports space. I thank you very much for doing that. But we, our main issue is about money always. We have the, the betting companies here in Uganda. I know National Rotary is trying to do that. But I, 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 I would like to, to, to task, I don't know whether it's the right language, the Minister for Finance and the Minister for Education and Sports to engage the National Lottery and Gaming Board. So that is betting houses that take our money, and most of them are for foreigners. Leave a percentage in the sports fund here. We need to develop a sports fund, a board to take it over, all out will manage, that will be another day. So that that money can go to develop a stadium in Bukoman Simbi, can go to do Kacheka, can go and... That's, how, that's what we have, we have seen everywhere we have traveled. Thank you. Thank you very much, Right Honorable Speaker. May her soul rest in internal peace. Uh, to me, there's a lot that needs to be done in as far as protection or safeguarding of the athletes are concerned. When you see how this lady died, it was so painful that uh, as a mother, at times I get speechless. But how I wish, one, the government puts strict rules on uh, rules and laws to protect the athletes, more so if they are the intending athletes to marry or to be married. It's important that there are some ground rules in as far as their accounts are concerned. Because when you look at the demise of Rebecca, it was mostly because of the money that she had. And this other husband, the older husband, who had wanted to marry her, or married her, wanted to take over the account, the account to be his name. Yet to me as a woman, that is not fair. Eh? At least in Uganda here, we are living in a country where there is women's emancipation. Whatever woman 
has earned, like I've said in Parliament, the people who run do a lot to achieve a medal or a gold medal. They do a lot of, they sweat many times. So they deserve to keep their money in their account, regardless of your spouse, your husband, to meet to the husbands of these athletes. It's very good that they learn how to love their women and in the process, see the softest way they can talk to them so that they can share the, what? the money. But to use this uh, brutal means of pouring petrol on somebody's daughter, it's not fair at all. It's not fair at all. It is really very sad that we have lost a champion, we have lost our girl, uh, uh, Tegei Rebecca, who participated in Olympics in Paris, just recklessly like that. You know, she has been training in Kenya and that's where uh, she got the husband that married her. You know, People, our Ugandans, they hope to go to Kenya because there are better facilities for training. I know government has put the Rieta Altitude Center uh, that is going to help our athletes to train and, and do competition, host competition, etc. But it's not in completion. The first phase has been done, but the second phase has never been, it has not even started. And uh, the second phase is the mother of that. Uh, is what will fast track or is what will make the stadium function because the second phase has hotels has restaurants has many many other facilities but now there is no way you can host or train from Terrieta Altitude Center when you don't have where people are going to sleep hotels uh, when the hostels has, uh, has not been finished so it, 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 is, it, is, it is quite very difficult so we don't want the government to just sank their money and not Yes, Honourable. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable, Right Honourable Speaker, for the opportunity given to, to me as an institution that is uh, believed indeed by the unfortunate incident of the passing of Sergeant Cheptegei Rabeka. Right Honourable Speaker, I, I support the motion of paying tribute to this young lady. As UPDF, when we received the information, we were greatly saddened and particularly touched by the manner in which she met her, uh, her death. Right Honourable Speaker, as the Honourable Minister has indeed indicated, uh, Sergeant Cheptegei Rebecca was accorded a befitting send-off and uh, it wouldn't have been any less. Right Honourable Speaker, uh, it is indeed sad that Sergeant Cheptegei Rebecca met her death in a manner she did as a policy, the security forces are giving priority sportsmen and women to get space, to be given special consideration when we are recruiting, so that not only do they have a stable livelihood apart from what they get during their performance, but they have also uh, guaranteed welfare. It is contradictory that a trained personnel could be treated this way. We feel sad and we, we are going to take steps to ensure those other press, uh, sports ladies and men who are particularly within the security forces take precaution not to meet such um, fate. Right Honorable Speaker, I also want to use this opportunity to comment on the, uh, on the statements and also what appeared in the press that Cheptegei couldn't have died had it not been that she was looking for better facilities in Kenya. Right Honorable Speaker, I've had opportunity to visit the high altitude uh, facility at Teriet near Kapshorwa town. It's not true that this facility is incomplete. 
To the contrary, this facility is co complete and in use. What I heard, even the uh, fellow sports people, I think the, the other male counterpart, he was making appeal that those who still want to go out should take advantage of this facility. Right Honorable Speaker, why, what we ought to, uh, to take note is that Terriet facility is a world-class facility. It can even host world games. I think what we ought to do as we pay tribute to this young lady is to urge the private sector to take advantage and begin putting uh, uh, hotels around Kapshorwa so that in the future we can bid to hold world games. That facility is, uh, I, I want to urge honorable members, it is worth visiting and see what this government has done. So with those uh, remarks, may the good Lord grant Cheptege eternal peace. I beg to support. Agent Rebecca Cheptege, our fallen Olympian, a marathon, and uh, our Irori. Right, Honorable Speaker, we have been paying tribute in this parliament for various sporting disciplines. But this afternoon, I stand in a very sad way and a sad moment to pay tribute to a fallen hero in the sports fraternity after being killed by a partner or a lover, for that matter. Those buy petrol and set ablaze. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is a wake-up call for domestic violence, which is so rampant, not only in sports, but even in our communities. To this extent, Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to thank the mover of the motion, the State Minister for Sports. He has tried to do his best, but Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to urge the mover that, on top of what he's doing, let's put a serious desk, a structure which helps these people when they get their money, Right Honorable Speaker. Because you are one, and talking to these athletes, all sports people one by one will not be so easy. And I join you together with the Minister of Gender. I'm happy that she's here in person. We need to educate, we need to sensitize our sports men and women who are lifting our flag so, so high. There are men who are out there who are just ready and ready to pray on the money that these athletes and the sports women get from their sweat. Right, Honorable Speaker, two, I would like to add my voice on the issue of lack of training grounds for our sports men and women. I want to thank the government that we have a, a high altitude training center which is soon to be completed. But, Mr. Speaker, the mover made mention of appreciating uh, uh, Sergeant Rebecca Cheptege. How are we going to appreciate her? Are we going to build another training center and we name it after her? I would like to add my voice onto yours that this would be something so great to remember her, to enable much as she's gone, it will inspire many more uh, youth who will live and up to what she has done. Three, right honorable speaker, we have our runners always migrating to the neighboring Kenya, looking for the training grounds. The lady was very patriotic. She concentrated, she represented our country. When we had Olympic going on, some runners were running for other countries. 
but she was so patriotic that she went and trained in Kenya, but came back and ran for Uganda. Right Honorable Speaker, I would like to urge that if we are really to remember her as a country, we need to get another stadium and name it after her. We have one and one is not enough. Finally, Akibwa was already named. We need another name, gender. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, sports is so much male dominated. And I would like to urge the Ministry of Sports and Gender to find a way to make sure that the gender balancing in sports must be seen to help these women. Earlier on in the past years, there were news that some of the girls were being asked to have sex so that they are put onto the team. And this is going to another level, that it happened in Kenya. This was the third time that the sports ladies were killed. So, Mr. Speaker, through you, the Minister of Gender is here. Let's put in place something to help the gender female flock in the sports fraternity. I want to thank you. Uh, I would also like to add my voice on our fallen hero, the late Chapter Gay Rebecca. Uh, Honorable Speaker, it is so hurting on when we heard the news. Honorable members, athletes or sportsmen generally, we come from a very deplorable background. In order for you to be a good athlete or any sport, you must come from a very poor background where your parents can pay even school fees or your parents can even afford one million a day. It is very unfortunate we lost our sister. Imagine waking up in the morning and you run 12 to 15 kilometers a daily. You're trying to find your way through to make a survival. On our speaker, not many years ago, women athletes, we are not supposed to compete or to do any sports. But I'm so happy to see that the generation is changing and also the government of this country is putting a lot to make sure sports really transform or change the lives of the youth. We do sports as a part of employment, Honorable Speaker. When you heard what Honorable Minister read, the performance of this wonderful young fallen hero who passed on, she had already made her way, she already made the family surviving with the small money that she had. It is very unfortunate that she didn't make it. And then my appeal, I would ask Honorable Minister, I know there's some money which they are paying the well-performed athletes who have won medal. Can the government still continue to support or pay the family of our fallen hero for some few months as she left a lot of or many children uh, three as you talk about. And then, Honorable Speaker, I would also ask the government, if the government cannot build a stadium, I would ask something simple, maybe a school. I think this would motivate other young female athletes or sports ladies in this country. Or even the road. I think this is simple because I look at, we have two occasions to pay tribute. Normally we do when somebody is still alive. Then secondly, we pay tribute when somebody is dead. But all this, we must do something which I would at least we would remember to remember our fallen hero, Chapege Rebecca. If we don't do this, it's just gonna end like this, and she will not be remembered no more. I feel so hurting for whatever happened, and I can't speak much, honourable speaker, and I would. As that may have soul rest in eternal peace. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, brother Honorable.